Shalom and welcome to Heart to Heart. I'm so glad you joined me and today we are going to talk about being tested. Being tested. And um, I want to use the story of Abraham. You know, there are many times that believers go through tests and trials and sometimes many think it's just from the devil. But I, I am beginning to find out more and more and more that you cannot begin to see great things that God has promised you without going through a test, a trial, a test of your faith. Now, but one thing I want us to bear in mind, no matter what trials you're going through, no matter what test, knowing that God is always there with you. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And uh, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and then we will go to our scripture in Genesis chapter 22. 1 Corinthians 10, in verse 13, it says, For no temptation, no trial, regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to mankind. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. That is, no temptation, no trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience and such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature. And he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and I said beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure but with the temptation he will always also provide the way out the means of escape that a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. So that is telling us the process that we go through to be able to receive certain blessings of God. See the manifestations of the blessings of God. That process will include testing of your faith. How can you say you have overcome your mother and conqueror when there's nothing that has tried your faith? How can you say that you are a man or a woman of great faith when you have not tested your faith. I think about all the men and the women of God through the scripture that we have known to be great men and women of faith. They went through challenges, but they came out victorious. They believed and they trusted God and they continued to stand firm even in the midst of those challenges. Now let's go to our text today about testing. And I, I want to deal with the benefits that come when you are tested and you pass the test. It's, it's amazing. You know, when we think about going to school, every one of you that have gone to school, any kind of school, any level of education, any level, be it elementary school, be it primary school, 
be it secondary school, be it college, be it university, you had to go through some tests, some reading, some studying, discipline yourself to attend classes, and then pass the test, whatever the format is. Then the benefit is that you're promoted to another level. Same thing with the, with the things of God. There are benefits when you pass the test. And so we see the story of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22. God does not test you or me or anyone so that you can be destroyed. No. No. Every test really is to take us to another level. But through the test, you always come out victorious and better. Today we are called the seed of Abraham. Abraham is the father of faith. How did he get there? He passed the test. Now, I want to read Genesis 22, verses 16 through 18. And this is the story you, you, you probably, if you're watching, you probably know the te the, this test that Abraham was supposed to uh, sacrifice his son, his only son between him and, and Sarah, his wife, Isaac. And he was supposed to sacrifice Isaac. And now listen to this. And he said, actually, let me start from verse 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Now, pay attention to this. Jehovah Jireh means God will provide, right? A lot of times when we pray and we confess the word of God over our finances, we say, Lord, we thank you that you are the provider. And he is the provider. He is a provider, and he, he has made it available to us. Jesus came and became poor so that you and I may be rich financially. Whatever areas that you need that provision, he has paid the price. But listen to what happened to Abraham, and we are the seed of Abraham. Now, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said, to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Why did he call it Jehovah Jireh? The Lord has provided. Why that name? Because rather than sacrificing his son Isaac, just about the time he was about to kill Isaac and sacrifice him as unto the Lord, a ram showed up by the bush. You know, you may say, well, you know, how did that happen? I really believe that the Lord opened his eyes and the ram was there for him. But he honestly wanted to sacrifice Isaac because that's what the Lord asked for. Now, so he says right here in verse 15, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, watch this, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, as the stars of the heaven. And as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Verse 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Oh my God, you want to know how to walk in the blessing? Through a test, okay? <laughs> I'm passing the test. You want to know how you can see the manifestation of the blessing? Passing the test. That's right, that's the benefit, okay? So let, let's look at this. 
before we go back to to um, review that scripture, I want you to know that previously, God told Abraham that he's already blessed. So some of you may say, well, Jesus came and paid the price, and he, he died for my sin, and, and he reconciled us back to our Heavenly Father. All that is true. And so I am expecting my blessing. I don't have to do anything. I just want my blessing. I just want everything good for me. And that is true. But I'm here to tell you there's always a process, and it's not creating work for you. The Lord wants you to possess the best. But how many of you know, you know, I have, um, I have children, and uh, the Lord has blessed us also with our first grandbaby is our granddaughter. And I'm telling you, I would do whatever that God desires for me to do for her. But I want you to know I will not at this time give her a diamond ring of maybe uh, three carat, and I uh, just give it to her to be wearing at the age of two, not because I don't love her. I do. Are you joking? I do. But because she will not be able to know how to take care of it. She's not of that age yet. No matter how emotionally I am attached to her, no matter how, how much I care for her, it's going to be foolishness on my part to pull that earring on her and she goes to school and she just pulls and pulls her ears. It's not wisdom. And so am I withholding that blessing from her? No, no I'm not. So after a while when she gets a little older, she will wear it. And even with that, I know her mom and her father, I know they'll be watching to be, make sure that when she comes back from maybe church or whatever, that she, she is keeping it nice and clean and securing it. They'll be monitoring all that. The same is true with physical blessings. It's not that God doesn't want you to be blessed and see the manifestation. Already, we are empowered. We carry the seed of God's blessing in us. We are already empowered with the blessings of God. But now, the manifestation, there are processes for you to be able to walk in that blessing. Okay, And that's what we see right here with Abraham. In chapter 12, let me show you. When the Lord said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from the, thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Now, in verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. In verse 3b he says, And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. The Lord spoke this to Abraham in chapter 12, and Abraham began to see, you know, here and there he was being blessed, and everyone around him knew that he is blessed. But then in chapter 22, this is chapter 12. In chapter 22, we are seeing that God said to him, that thing that he cares so much, they waited. He was 100 years old when, they, when he had Isaac with Sarah. And Sarah was 90 plus. And now the Lord said, I want you to sacrifice Isaac for me. After many years of waiting, after 25 years or more of the promises coming to pass, and then the Lord said, okay, lastly, I want you to kill Isaac for me. I want you to sacrifice Isaac for me. Wow. Wow. Can you imagine? That's a big test. And so what happened? Abraham said, Lord, you are the one that gave me Isaac. 
I will give him back to you. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Are you ready to pass that test? There are blessings of God that God wants to see you to see your heart. Because God is all knowing. He knows your heart. But he wants you to see your heart. Yeah, here Abraham has been believing God for a male son, a male child, by him and his wife Sarah. And here they had him, and the Lord said, turning him over to me. But he did not cry. He did not say, Lord, why now? And he did not try to cast out the demon and say, well, that's the, that's the demon speaking to me. That's not God. He said, okay, Lord, I will obey. He took off and went to the mountain to go sacrifice Isaac to the Lord. And all of a sudden, when he was about to just chop off his only son, the voice of the ram all came out from that bush. The Lord did a miracle, but it was all for Abraham to know that his source is the Lord and all about him is the Lord. I don't know what the Lord is saying to you that he wants you to do. And that probably is a big test. But you've got to pass that test. So let's look at what the Lord promised Abraham about this test that he passed. God said, I will surely bless you. I want to read that same scripture from the Amplified. Now, and the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I have sworn by myself, the Lord is the one saying, says the Lord, that since you have done this, since you have done this, since you have done this, and have not withheld from me or begrudged my giving me your son, your only son, since you have done this, since you have done what? Since you have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Since you have honored God by hearkening to that instruction. I hear the Lord saying that some of you, the Lord has instructed you over and over and over. Give to OCN. OCN it's from the Lord. OCN is God's vision. OCN is reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you give to OCN, you're not given to any man. You're not given to any individual. You are given as unto the Lord. And I'm telling you, there are blessings that are with you when the Lord knows and when you know that God can trust you with riches, that God can trust you with finances, that God can trust you to build his kingdom. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I hear the Lord saying, your manifested overflowing blessing is awaiting you. That's right. It's awaiting you. You will have no regrets. Now listen to this. In blessing, verse 17, Genesis 22. In blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply your descendants. Listen to this. Your seed, the Lord told Abraham, I will multiply 
your seed, your descendants, like the stars of the heavens, and like the sand on the seashore, and your seed, your heir, will possess the gates of his enemies. So number one, God said to Abraham that he will surely bless him. Number two, God said to Abraham, he will greatly increase his offspring. I love multiplication. I'm an engineer and I like addition, but I love multiplication even more so. And the Lord said to him, I will multiply you. I will multiply your offspring. I am going to greatly increase your offspring, greatly, exponentially. And the Lord is still saying the same thing to you and I. Child of God, God is a God of multiplication. He wants to multiply you. He wants to greatly increase you. He wants to know that he can count on you. You need to know that God wants to count on you. He wants to count on you. You want him to allow you to know that God can count on you. That you are not going to withhold anything good from him when he says to give it to him. You cannot see God, but you can see the works of the Lord. As you can see, OCN, we are reaching the nations of the world. Your love offering, your gift of love, your finances is saying, Lord, I will not withhold any good thing. I am going to trust you. You have spoken to my heart. Abraham heard the voice of the Lord and he obeyed the very first time and he gave. He gave his only son. Isn't that what our Heavenly Father did when he sent his only begotten son? That whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. When you love, you do something. Abraham loved the Lord so much that he obeyed the very first time and gave. A heavenly father loves the world so much that he did not withhold his only begotten son, Yeshua HaMashiach. He gave him to come and die to redeem mankind. That whosoever, any one of you that's watching, if you do not know him as your Lord and Savior, you can receive him right now. You can say this with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died for my sin. I believe you resurrected that I may have eternal life. Fill me with your spirit. In your name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I would like to hear from you. Now let's conclude here another benefit. Your offsprings, my offsprings, you and I, with our descendants, with our offsprings, will bless the nations of the earth. Out of us, families, nations will be blessed only because you obeyed the voice of the Lord, only because we obeyed the voice of the Lord, not to withhold that which he has given to us. Child of God, I plead with you today 
if the Lord is laying in your heart to do that which is pleasing to him, whatever it is, it's not just here at OCN. Maybe in your family, maybe wherever you go to church, maybe your loved one, maybe even forgiven people, but you know that which the Lord is saying, do. I'm asking you to do it. Pass the test. Pass the test and you will never be the same. Again, and in your seed, in Christ, my God have mercy, in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Isn't that what happened? Our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMashiach came out of the loins of Abraham's seed, if you keep on going. Now he came and reconciled us back to our Father. So that prophetic word that was given to Abraham came to pass only because he obeyed the word of the Lord when he heard it. When the Lord said, I want your son Isaac. I tell you, it pays. It pays to understand the voice of the Lord. And it pays to trust the Holy Spirit to give you that empowerment, that grace. When it seems like you can't, I'm telling you all of a sudden, his grace will be sufficient and you will do it. There are situations right now in your life and you are saying, Lord, bless me. And the Lord is saying, blessing, I have blessed you. Just like what we saw in Abraham chapter 12. And now, the last mile is the beloved son. I don't know what your last mile is. What is that that is so dear to you that the Lord is saying, give that to me. You can never outgive God. Do it, beloved. Father, I pray for all that you are speaking to, those that you are ministering even right now. Lord, they know you have spoken to them. I ask, O oh Lord, that by your grace, they will not procrastinate. Lord, I'm asking you that you open the eyes of their understanding. They will know indeed we heard clearly. The Lord spoke to me that which you did for Abraham. He did not even have to ask his wife, Sarah. He heard you and that was all that mattered. He proceeded to bring about the sacrifice of his son. But you are a faithful God. You are a just God. You are almighty, the great provider, and no one can outgive you. I just say thank you, Lord, for those that are stepping out to give, even to OCN. Lord, I'm asking you that you bring about the manifestation of that blessing. In the name of our Yeshua. Lord, I pray that your children that are watching, that they will pass the test and begin to experience the increase, the great increase in the blessing of their offsprings, their children and grandchildren, no matter whatever is going on in their lives. Turn things around for good. Do it for your namesake, O oh Lord. We say it's granted. Amen. I would like to hear from you. Write me at P.O. Box 45465. Los Angeles, California, 90045. Until next time, know this. God loves you. So do I. Amen.